we are continuing our wonderful journey throughout the wonderful epistles. Paul, Apostle, Apostle Paul wrote to the young men, the young disciple, the young servant of Christ Jesus called Timothy. So far, we went through Timothy chapter one, chapter two, chapter three, verse by verse, an in-depth story of these books, these chapters rather. So by the grace of God, let's continue tonight with uh, chapter four. Chapter four starts with uh, wonderful prophecies about end times. And we, we are seeing the fulfillment of those prophecies or the accomplishment of these prophecies. All inspired by the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit, who wrote to Timothy almost 2,000 years ago. But if... Uh, Paul were to return for, from the, the place of rest where, where he's wearing, where he's, uh, wearing the, uh, the return of the Lord Jesus Christ for the rapture of the church, he would, he would be so shocked to find that those prophecies uh, are fulfilled beyond even his wildest imaginations. So we see here, now the spirit, uh, I hope you remark that spirit here is with capital S. Capital S meaning the spirit from God. When you see the Bible, spirit with lower S, does mean it's not a spirit from God, it's a demon. So be careful when you read the Bible. The spirit from God is with capital S, but the spirit of the spirit of the devil or the spirit of the, the world is with a lower S. Now the spirit speaks or speaks to put it simply, speak speaks expressly, expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith giving heed to seducing seducing spirits seducing spirits and doctrines of devils these prophecies are fulfilled as i said we we are experiencing nowadays a great departure from the faith, mostly in those so-called called churches, a great departure. So the Spirit expressly speaks here or speaks here, saying, in latter time, who can doubt that we're living in the latter times or end times? We're living, we're living in the latter times the Lord Jesus Christ can come any time now, any time. Particularly, I believe he's almost ready to come back to, wrap, to, uh, to, take, to take the church, the Holy Church with him. Yeah, and uh, we have to be ready. We have to live every day as if it were the last, our last day on earth. You may be young, very young, but let me tell you something. There are young people, even younger, even babies right now in hospitals, dying right now, right now in Houston, dying in hospitals, uh, getting uh, uh, sent to morgues, to morgues, uh, getting ready for burials. Right now, as, I, I, uh, as I'm, I'm speaking right now. So don't think uh, you're living... You know, forever on earth. And 
as as young people uh, you think you eternal on earth let's say you're five now or ten you think reaching 30 or 40 is like uh, uh, centuries ahead but let me tell you something time is flying amazingly nowadays and we're living uh, the end times with the great apostasy apostasy is the great departure from the truth of the gospel of the lord jesus christ people are departing from that truth and uh, they are giving heed i like this i like that expression giving heed to uh, seduction uh, uh, sorry seducing spirits and doctrines of devils so any doctrine that is not according to the gospel of Jesus Christ, any doctrine that is not according to the word of God, is evil. Evil doctrine. Evil doctrine. Verse 2, speaking lies in hypocrisy, having the, the, their conscience seared with hot iron. Hot iron. And it's amazing how uh, the Bible can describe in great details what is going on right now with some people's minds speaking lies in hypocrisy, having their conscience. Those are false pastors. Can you see how harsh, how harsh God, the Holy Spirit, can be against those uh, professing false doctrines, speaking lies in hypocrisy, having their conscience seared, seared with hot, uh, hot high, uh, iron. So uh, the meaning of this verse is that their conscience is already marked. They cannot longer, they cannot longer, they can no longer repent. There is no turning back for them. They already mark with a uh, Hot, hot iron. There is no turning back. There is, they, 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 uh, their, their place is already in hell, in hell fire, eternally. Even though they're still alive you know, on this earth, they, they already uh, in hell. There is nothing that can change that. And look at some example of their false doctrines. From verse 3. One example is what? Forbidding to marry. And you have a whole abominable religion, a Catholic religion who is, founding, who is founded in the, so, the so called abstinence. Abstinence means you preserving yourself, you, you abstaining yourself from marrying uh, Catholic priests or nuns, or cardinals, or so-called bishops, or popes, they don't marry. They don't marry. At the same time, their flesh is burning. What happens? They abused, they abuse, uh, they abuse, sorry, they abuse uh, uh, young kids. They are pedophiles. They are rapists, raping uh, nuns in their monasteries. Uh, you can find a lot of testimony uh, on the internet uh, of uh, a lot of uh, uh, lawsuits, class action lawsuits against uh, uh, the, the Catholic churches because of uh, uh, decades of uh, child abuse, sexual abuse, pedophilia, rape, not only rape on child, on, uh, on children, but rape on women rip on, on uh, uh, nuns. You see, this is not the commandment of, uh, of uh, God uh, to impose men to abstain from marrying. Those are doctrines of demon, demons. Now, if you, uh, you abstain to marry yourself for a personal reason like uh, serving God, that should be the only reason. But uh, if you uh, abstain from marrying for another reason, uh, you're going a, against the will of God in your life. You don't know the will of God in your life. 
uh, we should always say, God, may your will, may your will be done in my life. That's how we should always speak. May your will be done in my life. Uh, if uh, I'm to be married, if I'm to, to get married, God, please, Father, may your will be done in my life. That's why we, that's how we should be speaking, we should be praying. Now, if uh, a so-called man of God or a cult or a religion uh, give you the, gives you the commandment to abstain from marrying, this is an example of doctrine of demons. Uh, the uh, doctrine, doctrine of demons, verse 1, is talking, is talking about. So verse 3, forbidden to marry and commanding to abstain from meat. And this verse is exposing the trend behind veganism. It's a demonic trend. If you uh, abstain from eating meat, meats from, uh, for uh, uh, personal reason, for personal taste, okay, no problem. But now there is a vogue, there is a trend of being a vegan, only uh, uh, eating herbs like cows or goats, if it's your preference, it's your preference. Uh, it shouldn't be imposed. And uh, there is uh, one, another abominable religion, uh, Adventist of the Seventh Day. I don't know if uh, that's the right, the right, uh, the right, uh, the, the right uh, name. It's a de denomination, uh, the Adventists of the uh, Seventh Day. Uh, founded among other persons by uh, this w w woman, uh, Ellen White, uh, who was not supposed to teach, who was not supposed to usurp, usurp authority. And they, one of their commandments is to abstain from, from eating meat. And we see that these prophecies have been fulfilled. We have the Catholic Church, you don't have to be married if you serve God. You don't have to, uh, to be married. At the same time, as I said, they uh, 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 inflict mental anguish, unspeakable mental, mental anguish on young uh, 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 boys they sexually abu abuse. They inflict uh, mental anguish upon uh, nuns, they rape in their monasteries. At the same time, they, they say you shouldn't be, uh, you shouldn't get married if you, you're serving God. But that's not our God. Those are uh, uh, false doctrines. So this, this is an example. Yeah, abstaining from marrying is accomplished with uh, the abominable religion, the Catholic religion. Uh, abstaining from myths, you have an example. The... Uh, uh, Adventists of the seven days. So again, and commanding, you say they command. Nobody should command you. You want to eat meat, you don't want to eat meat, you want to eat only herbs or only meat, that's your choice. You give thanks for that, that's your choice. Now, let's say I say, okay, now, as from today, nobody's eating bread, flour, or cornflakes, or the pork, or sausages, because it's a commandment from God. No, it's not a commandment from God. It's a commandment from demons, you see. It should be your personal choice, your personal taste. So to commanding to abstain from it, which God has created to be received with thanksgiving of them which believe and know the truth. If you know the truth, Eat whatsoever food is it is in front of you, unless that food shock your conscience, uh, your conscience, and give thanks, think, give thanks to God, and we we see it in verse four. For every creature of God is good, and nothing to be refused, if it is if it be received with thanksgiving. Let me read again verse four. For every creature. 
what whatever constitute our food every creature of god constitute constituting our food is good and nothing 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 is to be refused if it be received with what thanks giving giving thanks and the reason there is a reason even a further reason on verse 5 verse 5 for it is sanctified by the word the word of god and prayer it is sanctified that's why i i urge you kids i urge you to always pray before eating or before even drinking you don't know if at the, the 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 water that is coming at that moment from the fridge got contaminated by a sudden defect in the fridge and that can poison you and you die you can eat a piece of meat that got poisoned by chemical without knowing you can be injured you can die that's why we are to always pray before eating giving thanks because when we pray we have a wonderful revelation in, in verse 5 when we pray we sanctify we make it holy we make it pure even though it's polluted even though it's contaminated even though it's dirty we sanctify remember what jesus christ said zealous hypocrite hypocrites called pharisees they were observing how jesus christ apostles and disciples were eating without washing their their hands they were eating with with dirty hands and they were accusing jesus christ because according to the law before eating you were supposed to wash your hands so they were shocked but allegedly shocked in fact they were hypocrite full of sins but pretending to be holy so they confronted jesus they say how come your disciples are eating without washing their hands and jesus christ gave a wonderful answer saying it is not what enters in a man's mouth that defiles the man but what come out of his mouth out of his heart or his mouth evil thoughts filthy thoughts that's what defiles a man so eating without uh, let's say eating without washing your hands or eating something that is accidentally dirty or accidentally poisoned if you pray we have a promise here it is how sanctified you see the blessing of praying it shouldn't be bothersome to pray before eating see again verse 5 for it is it is sanctified by the word of god and prayer on the line this verse 5 verse 5 shows us the power of the prayer is sanctified by prayer is sanctified so don't pray mechanically mechanically as in uh, take time to pray before eating take time it shouldn't be like a, like a robot no be serious about that you go to bed you pray even taking your shower before taking your shower you pray prayer has power in the name of jesus christ don't forget that prayer has power prayer has power when you pray to god that prayer has power the power to sanctify your food the power to to transform your show, uh, your your water the water for your your bath or for your shower 
into a to transform it into a, a, a medicine for your healing. Prayer has power before going to bed, before going on a trip, before you go out for groceries. Pray for the protection. That's a lifestyle we should develop. We should develop as Christians before going out, even in a park, for pleasure to play. To go hiking in the forest or fishing, hunting, whatever hobby you have, hobby or whatever thing you're doing, pray before. Prayer is powerful. Prayer is powerful. When you pray, God, you see here the power of prayer as it sanctifies. Everything we eat, we put in in, uh, in, our, in our mouth, in our mouths. Verse six: If you put bre the brethren in remembrance of these things, you shall be a good minister of Jesus Christ, nourished, nourished up in the words of faith and of good doctrine, whereunto you have attained. You see. A good minister teaching, shepherd, shepherdizing other people. A good minister should always remind. Putting in remembrance means reminding to people. Always remind, always remind. That's why when I teach, I always remind the same thing. People may feel tired. To hear me saying this, to hear me say say the, the, the same thing all over again is purposefully, is purposefully, and it's biblical. We should repeat and repeat and repeat and repeat. A lady from Europe one, one, once testified to me saying, I, I ended up covering my, my, my head before praying after hearing you bombarding my ears with that. I was tired of listening, listening, of listening to you, but rebelling in my heart. Until one day, I was surprised to see myself praying with my head covered. You see, just say it again and again and again. Say it again and again and again and again and again and again and again. Say it again and again and again. So, a good minister of Jesus Christ, he is characterized here by how, uh, uh, by that habit of always putting into remembrance, remembrance those things, meaning always reminding them to. Uh, to brothers and sisters, you 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 teaching the word of God too. Now we go even further. For uh, verse no, I, okay, I have to. Uh, I was already in verse eight. Let me go back to verse seven. But refuse profane and old wives fables. And exercise thyself, or to put it simply, yourself rather, unto godliness. You see, we see again the danger of fables. And many religions nowadays are built on fables, genealogies, fables. So the Bible says, refuse is a commandment. Somebody comes to you with a fables about Christmas about the Easter, Easter burning, Easter eggs, chasing after Easter, Easter eggs or Easter burning, or uh, uh, St. Valentine's or all those uh, paganistic or pagan uh, holidays or pagan uh, celebrations. You refuse them, refuse them. Christmas is not in, is not in the Bible. Saint Valentine is not in the Bible. The Easter Bunny is not in the Bible. 
Those are uh, pagan traditions coming from an ancient Rome or ancient Greece. You have to refute those things. Refuse them is a commandment. You don't commingle yourself with those, those pagan traditions. Stay away from them. There is no accord between the darkness and the light of the Lord Jesus Christ. And we have the light of Lord Jesus Christ in the sound doctrine. No fellowship with those things. Look at what they, they do in those churches right nowadays. They introduce uh, uh, worldly music. They even have football, football parties. All kind of entertainments in those churches. Those are fables. I like that expression, old wise fables. Let's go to verse 8. Again, verse 7 before we, we move on. But refuse profane and old wives' fables and exercise thyself rather on, onto God, godliness. You see how people nowadays, they spend a lot of money, a lot of time for fitness. Fitness is a multi-billion industry in the United States. Fitness. It's even becoming religion. Beside the veganism I was talking to. Fitness, bodybuilding. It's not bad to to watch, uh, it's, not, it's not a sin to exercise, it's not a sin to, uh, to desire to be fit. But what we should desire most is our spiritual fitness, not the physical fitness. See, young men or women and those pretending to be uh, or, or, or purporting, purporting to be Christians, they're more concerned about their physical fitness. We should be concerned about our spiritual fitness. That's what we're about to see here. Exercise thyself rather onto what? Onto godliness. It's not bad to exercise yourself. It's not a sin. Jogging from time to time, uh, hiking from time to time, doing push-ups from time to time is not a sin. But it's a sin if uh, you push it to the level where it becomes like religion for you. Your body becomes an idol. You have to be careful. And that's the, the thing behind bodybuilding. In those uh, fitness centers where they do bodybuilding, at some point, their body becomes their God. Their body becomes their God. They want to sculpt, to sculpt, to make, to, 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 to build, to carve their muscles, to, uh, to improve their physical uh, strength. The Bible says in verse 8, For bodily exercise profiteth little. Bodily ex It profiteth, but how? Little, because it's the flesh. When you die, you get buried. After you're, 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 after you're dead, you get buried. So it pro it, the, Bible is not, the Bible is not saying it doesn't profit. The Bible says it does what? It profits little. Little. But godliness is profitable, profitable unto all things. So we should aspire to exercise our godliness. And do you know how you exercise your godliness? The, the hatred, the only hatred you should have is not the hatred against each other. 
even your enemy, you should not, you, you must not hate your enemies. The only hatred you should have is the hatred against what? Sinning. The fear of God is the beginning of the, 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 uh, the wisdom. The only fear we should have is the fear to sin against God, to lie, to steal, to rob, to do bad, bad things. That's the only fear we should have. So we should exercise, or rather, we must exercise godliness day after day. Bodily exercise can profit, but the Bible says it profits little. Look at the former governor of the state of California, Schwarzenegger, or not Schwarzenegger. Try to compare his picture when he was Terry and his picture now. You can understand that verse. It profits little. After you get old, your muscles are gone. Uh, you don't have the same shape. The shape of your arms, your shoulders, your legs is, is gone. Now, what about when you're dead? It's gone. You live for a season. You live, you live for a few days, uh, a few years. After that, your wonderful body that was the, 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 the wonderful body that was causing your, your, your pride is gone. It's, it's over. But godliness is everlasting. Godliness is, is eternal. Godliness is forever. Because godliness starts now until we meet with Jesus Christ and forever and ever and ever. So verse 8 again before we move on. Bodily exercise, profiteth, profiteth or rather profits. Uh, I would rather read with a, a simple English you know, and not the, 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 the advanced uh, ancient English of King John Version. So for bodily exercise, profits little. But godliness is profitable, profitable unto all things, having promise of the life that now is and of that which is to come. That's what I was planning. Everything you do on earth, your physical exercise, your physical fitness is, on, is just for this earth. It's for a season. It's for a few years. It's just for now. Look here. It's just for now. So we have to be attracted but by, that, by things that are eternal and not things that are temporal, that are seasonal. You live for a season. You live for a generation or two or three. That's it. After that, you're gone. Verse 9. This is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptation. So this, what I'm sharing with you tonight is a faithful saying, meaning is something certain, is something true, is something with the utmost certainty, with the utmost certainty. What I'm sharing with you, that's the meaning of this verse. This is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptation, meaning these verses, these verses we're sharing are worthy to be accepted by you. I worthy to be received by you. Verse 10, 
For therefore, we labor, we both labor and suffer reproach. Reproach. Again, verse 10. For therefore, we both labor and suffer reproach. Because we trust in the living God. We trust in who? In the living God, who is the Savior of all men, especially of those who believe. So we have to trust. Our trust shouldn't be in our intelligence, in our money, in our diplomas, in our degrees, in our salaries, in our achievements, in, in our houses, in our wealth, in our bank accounts. Our trust, our confidence should be in the living God who is, according to verse 10, who is the Savior of all men, especially of those that believe. Verse 11, these things I, these things command and teach. Yeah, that's the, Paul talking to Timothy. Timothy was a very young man. Very young. Very young. And you're going to see what Paul is commanding in verse 12. These things command and teach. That's a commandment from God to Timothy through Apostle Paul. God is saying to Timothy through Apostle Paul, these things command and teach. Meaning, declare them. Declare them. Give those commandments to people of the church uh, uh, of Ephesus you're leading. Again, these things command and teach. Now, look at verse 12. Let no man despise thy youth. Let no man despise thy youth. Because uh, a, a young man is starting to preach, is starting a ministry, he shouldn't be despised. That's why myself, uh, personally, <laughs> this, this is the last thing I would do, despising a young man. Because when I see a young man preaching, I no longer see a young man. I see a servant of the almighty God. The most high God. I no longer see young men. So, ho, ho to those who despise young men because they are young. You don't have to despise. Let no man despise thy youth. And there is, there is a reason why Paul is trying to comfort Timothy here. Certainly, Timothy was uh, frustrated by uh, many uh, occurrences where uh, he was mocked or he was uh, disrespected, disrespected or uh, despised because of his youth. Uh, certainly he complained. And uh, Paul is saying to Timothy, let no man despise thy youth. And this is a, a great comfort. A great comfort for all young men who wants to engage in the ministry. There is no time to engage in the ministry. We have the example of Jesus Christ at age, how, how old he was, he, he was he? Age 12, confronting doctors. They were astonished. Twelve he was confronting in Jerusalem. High priests, doctors, having the, the caliber, the caliber of Gamaliel, the Lord Jesus Christ, twelve confronted them. And they were amazed. So there is no age. You can start serving the Lord as a young man, as a teenager, even at 15, 16. 17, and so forth. But be careful. There is a danger. We saw that danger. Being a novice and serving the Lord can be a big trap. And it's a dangerous trap. I would say a fatal trap. It's good to have the, the zeal to serve the Lord, the motivation, the the, the, the 
the, 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 the commitment to serve the Lord, but be careful. There's a danger, the danger of uh, having your mind engulfed or inflamed by, uh, by pride, by boasting, bragging. So verse 12 again, let's finish. Let no man despise thy youth or your youth, to put it simply, but be yourself an example of the believers. Young Christians, be examples. Mostly the one exposing, denouncing, the one teaching. Be an example. Be an example of the believers. Be a uh, the, uh, in the world today. They call role, role role models or influencers or role 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 models. Be a role model. Be an influencer. Be an example. Be a model. For all young people, for other young people, a model by, by what? In what? In word. When you speak, wow! They say this young man doesn't he doesn't speak like us. There is no foul word coming out of his mouth. There is no OMG. There is no. Cursing. His, his way of speaking is polished. He is poised, poised when he speaks. Be an example. The way you dress, young women, the way you dress, be an example. Don't imitate, don't try to imitate. Uh, Superstars from Hollywood. Be a model in chastity, in modesty. If you're a young man, be a model. The way you speak, your conversation, your charity, in spirit, in faith, and purity. Purity. Purity is a, a character of godliness. Young men and young women, I will never be tired of reminding you verse 13. Look what Paul is saying to Timothy, a young servant. Until I come, give attendance to reading. Reading the Bible. Give attendance to reading, to exhortation, to doctrine. Give attendance to reading. The greatest portion of your time daily, young men, should be devoted to reading. Do you know that even in 10 years, 10 years or 10 years is even far. Even in 5 years, the Bible can be banned in the United States. Bend. Bend. So if the, the Bibles are bent, who can bend the Bible in your heart? It's time to read the Bible. Be careful. Read the Bible. Read it. This is mostly to young servants. When you're young, take time to read the Bible. No, I'm tired today. No. When it comes to eat, you're not tired. You can have all kinds of snacks throughout the day, but you don't have snacks here and there throughout the Bible. Yeah. Read, read, give attendance. Give attendance to reading, to exhortation, to doctrine. Verse 14, and this is for young servants. Neglect not the gift that is in you. Some have the gift to, to lead, the gift to teach. Do not neglect. Neglect. 
God gave you a gift, the gift to speak, the gift to share the Bible, the, the gift to expose the darkness. And you're going to say, no, today I think I'm tired. There is no being tired. There is no neglect. Don't neglect. So we have revelation, exhortations here. First, give attendance to reading. So read the Bible without ceasing. And then, neglect not the gift. You have a gift. Some have the gift of teaching. Other have the gift of exhortation. Other have the gift of exposing the devil. The, the, the deeds of the darkness, evil doctrine or whatever is going, is, is going in false churches, you can have that gift. Do not neglect that gift. Do not neglect. Now, verse 15, let's finish. Meditate upon these things. Everything we just read tonight. Meditate. Don't forget. After we close up our Bible, oh, uh, it, it enters in one ear and it gets out from uh, the other ear. No. Meditate. Go to bed. Think again what you read. Maybe you can go back and read that chapter again for yourself. Go to each verse. Listen to, the, to, to, that, to this teaching. If it is, uh, it is uh, published uh, later on by the grace of God. Go back. Listen to it. Go back to this chapter. Read it, by, read it by yourself. Meditate those words. How God wants you to give attendance to reading. How God wants you to not neglect the gift that is in you. Meditate upon these things. Give thyself holy. Look, give thyself holy. Kids, this is me. This ten, this past 10 or 11 years in this ministry, I would say even 12 years, uh, 13 years in this ministry because the ministry began in 20, uh, 2011. We were in Kerry, Texas. 13 years later, I'm still there. And even myself reading this tonight, I get encouragement. Again, let's go back. We, I think it seems like we are... We, uh, we skip a portion in verse 14. Neglect not the gift that is in you, which was given, given thee by prophecy with the laying on the hands of the presbytery, meaning uh, elders in the church. Neglect not the gift that is in you, which was given thee by prophecy with the laying on of the hands of the presbyteries, meaning the elder in the church. They lay hands. They laid hand on Timothy's head and they prophesy, say, this is your ministry. And they're telling Timothy, do not regret, neglect. Now, verse 15, meditate upon these things, give thyself wholly to them, that Thy or your progress may appear to all your progress. Verse 16, and that, that is our conclusion tonight. Take heed unto thyself, meaning be careful of on yourself. You may be gifted on denouncing, you may be gifted on exposing, you may be gifted on presenting or teaching or whatever you can do. But watch upon yourself. That's the meaning of this verse. Take heed unto yourself. Watch. Watch yourself. Be careful. We watch each other, but you have your responsibility to watch upon yourself and upon the doctrine so you watch not, not only yourself you watch also your doctrine what you're teaching that's how you have to be careful when you open your mouth to teach you have to be careful watch upon yourself am I worthy to teach and if you want to teach to teach sorry to teach also watch what is coming out of your mouth? Is it biblical? 
Is it, a, is it according to the sound doctrine of the gospel of Jesus Christ? Is it according to the Bible? So take heed unto, uh, on, on, unto yourself, meaning watch yourself. Watch yourself and watch the doctrine you're teaching. Continue in them. For in doing so, not only will you save, save yourself, you will save others who hear you. What a great chapter. And I think Timothy is a great book to prepare young men to ministry. That's the conclusion we can have. Timothy is a great book to prepare for the ministry. You don't have to go to seminaries. Masonic, Freemason, uh, uh, Freemason, Freemason seminaries like Baptist and so forth. You don't have to go there to pay money and to say, I'm going to have my PhD in divinity science. <laughs> what a joke, divinity science. Can you put God in a, laborator in a human uh, laboratory or make God a subject of a, a scientific story or soci sociological story? There's no way you can do that. So I hope... You were blessed by a lot of things we saw today, mostly as young men. Young men, be careful. Watch yourself. That's the conclusion tonight. Watch yourself. Watch why you, you're teaching. Make sure it's according to the word, of, the word of God. That's why you should give attendance to reading the Bible and give yourself wholly to these things. And by doing so, Your progress will be evident to everybody. And by doing so, you will save not only yourself, but everybody who is listening to you. Let's pray. Father, we are very much grateful for those revelations we read again tonight. Father, we want to ask for forgiveness for all the times, all the times, all the years we acted contrary to those great commandments we just read. Father, forgive us our ignorance, forgive us our lack of passion, forgive us any omission, any time we did not uh, get ourselves holy in serving you. Father, thy word is wonderful. That was that thy word is light. Thank you for putting these things in our memories again, putting that into remembrance so that we can recall and we can become valiant for the truth, passionate for the truth. Thank you for this wonderful word which is the, the, your word. Father, as we are about to go to bed, we implore your protection around this house, around, around our beds, around the neighborhood. Father, after watching the news about what happened in Houston, Texas, or in other cities on, uh, in Texas, we can recognize, acknowledge how grateful, uh, how uh, 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 blessed we were being protect, protected by you, by your uh, celestial army, mighty army. Father, thank you for everything you, you've been doing for us. Father, thank you for our sleep. Thank you for the, the, the rest in our bodies, our flesh, our soul. Thank you for everything. 
we prayed in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.